Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joby and today we're gonna to be driving the 2024 Mazda Miata. Sorry, it's a bit windy up here in the Rocky Mountains, but I hope that doesn't detract from the video at all. Uh, and hopefully it won't detract from this absolutely beautiful car as well. Now, let me provide a brief overview of the 2024 Mazda Miata. Now, this is a light refresh. It's not a full redesign. So there are just some minor changes to the interior and the exterior, which I'll get into a little bit later. But let's talk about this Mazda specifically, or this Miata specifically rather. Uh, this one comes in at just under $39,000. This is the RF version, so it has the retractable hardtop. Um, it notably does not have the BBS, Recaro, and Brembo package. Sorry. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have that, which is the Miata that we tested last year did have that package. We'll get into a little bit more of that later in the video, uh, but that is a noteworthy option because that does come standard in the club trim, uh, or you can option it for around... I think it's $4,500, um, but yeah, again, I'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, let's start in the engine bay. This is the same two liter four cylinder uh, that was in the Miata last year as well. It produces 181 horsepower, uh, which is not a ton, but you gotta remember that this Miata is incredibly light. Um, I don't have the torqued figure off the top of my head, but I will tell you um, that that is plenty of horsepower for this car. Um, and it doesn't really hinder the driving experience at all. I'll get into more of that during my drive impressions, but it is the same two liter four cylinder engine from last year. Okay, now let's talk interior. Uh, there are a couple of changes here in the interior that I think are worth noting. Um, I'm gonna try to do this real quick because it's starting to actually rain right now and I wanna put the top back up, but uh, a couple of things here. So we have this digital, not really digital, mostly analog gauge cluster, which is kind of surprising to see in 2024. Uh, but it's actually pretty nice. You do have a little digital one right there that shows you your fuel consumption. As you can tell, we're actually getting really good fuel economy. I mean, averaging 31. Uh, so very good there. And then you have your tachometer and then your speedometer right there. Uh, another noteworthy thing here is all of the climate controls are physical, which is super nice. Very, very simple. Um, so really just temperature, fan speed, and then where you want the air to go, which is super nice. Uh, one of the new things for the 2024 model, let me try to angle the camera, is you actually have two USB-C ports right here. Um, so one is for charging and data, and the other one is just for charging. So it's super nice to have that extra connectivity that we just didn't have in the uh, Miata last year. Now, of course, we have the six-speed manual transmission, a nice physical handbrake, my water bottle. And speaking of the water bottle, you actually have these cool little movable cup holder so there's a little slot that it goes into right there you can pop it in or you can move it back to behind the ugh, seats a little bit and then you can grab it there i just don't think it's that comfortable to try to reach back while you're driving to grab it from there um, but it does work uh quite nice and my water bottle i don't think this is an oversized water bottle but it does fit quite nice in there and actually stays in there i haven't had any issues with it falling out or anything but yeah and then the steering wheel is pretty much unchanged. I don't think it's actually changed at all. Uh, you have all of your media controls right here. Um, and then you also have some controls for your uh, cruise control, which I actually haven't used a cruise control at all. Um, but yeah, there's that. Then you have these cool little air vents as well, which I think are pretty nice. Um, but yeah, overall the interior is pretty much unchanged. Uh, you do have this little storage compartment back here. I have my wallet and keys. Uh, but the main thing here is there's actually not really a ton of storage here in this interior um, other than that little little cubby that I guess that I just showed you um, so it can be a little bit tricky to find places to put things especially like a larger phone um, but that's just kind of a trade-off when you purchase or, or driving a car like this uh, you know what you're getting into this car is incredibly small um, which is one of the reasons why it's such a great car in a lot of ways. Um, the size actually makes it, is, is a huge benefit here. One of the other things is this updated screen. This is a much larger and a higher resolution screen. And it's also a little bit more responsive. I don't think it's like too much more responsive, but it is much larger and much higher resolution, uh, which is nice. Um, and because of the larger screen, you can actually just run a cable to this little cubby back here. And then you could just throw your phone in there and then just not really have to worry about messing with your phone while you're driving, which I personally have been doing. Um, I'm not sure how many other Miata owners would be doing that, but yeah, 
it is something that you can do. One other area I did want to touch on is the rear cargo area. There is actually a trunk in here and I'll show you right now. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty decent size. Yesterday I fit a 24 inch monitor in there and there's plenty of room left. Um, I think you could probably fit uh, maybe two or three medium to large backpacks in there. Um, yeah, it is kind of a weird sized opening. Um, so fitting like a large suitcase in here might be kind of a thing even, it might be kind of an issue, even though it could probably technically fit in like in the inside, but actually getting it through the hole would be a little bit of a challenge probably if I had to guess. But yeah, there is a cargo area. It can fit a decent amount of stuff, but that's not really the main draw to the Miata anyways, but I thought I'd show you. Okay, let's go ahead and talk design uh, as it starts to rain a little bit here. But one of the very first things that you'll notice is the headlight assembly is a little bit different this year. Uh, they added an additional, uh, I think it's this part right here that's a little bit different and they added this sort of little angular LED piece. But I do think it looks nice. The overall design is not really that different from the 2023 or just the ND2 in general. It looks very similar. The front end is quite the same. Uh, one of the things I wanted to note here are these wheels. These are a little bit different than the ones that we had last year. These are not the BBS wheels. Personally, I like the BBS wheels a lot more in terms of design. This sort of spoky design with the sort of silver or aluminum accents, I'm just not the biggest fan of. I don't think they look terrible necessarily, but not really my favorite design. But yeah, moving on to the back a little bit, we have the same sort of, you know, roadster design as you would come to expect in a Miata. As I mentioned before, this is the hard top variant. So the hard top will retract out of here and you know lock into place, all nice. Um, and yeah, it does look pretty nice once it's all up and sorted. And then moving on to the back, they actually also have changed, I believe the tail lights as well. They're a little bit different. They look very similar, um, but yeah, just a little bit different, but it is a minor refresh and the overall design is largely the same with the exception of like i said the front end is a little bit different but it retains that beautiful nd design which i personally really really love now let's talk drive impressions the drive impressions of the 2024 refreshed mazda miata um yeah this this is a very light refresh and honestly it hasn't really changed the driving or like my drive impressions too much but I will say that the Miata formula is as great as ever. You know, this two liter engine, yeah, it only produces 181 horsepower, but you know, when you're driving back roads like this, or not really back roads, just, you know, twisty, windy mountain roads, um, 181 horsepower feels like plenty. Um, I don't know. I We have driven a number of cars, you know, in these sort of roads in this past that Chase and I like to go on. And the Miata is by far my favorite one of all of the cars we've driven. You know, recently we drove that C43 AMG up here, which has, I don't know, I think it was like 405 horsepower. Uh, but I'd still much rather drive this uh, around these roads than that. And it has nothing to do with the power. This car just feels so planted. Um, you know, it handles incredibly well. It's very light and nimble. Um, and it just makes it such a blast to drive. Uh, it's a great, you know, Sunday car, you know, go on a Sunday drive type of car. You know, it is super great. And the cool thing is, is that I guess if you wanted to, you could track this car, uh, which is not necessarily the case with any sort of performance or sporty car. Uh, you could legitimately track this car. You probably want to get the upgraded brakes, get that BBS Recaro um, and Brembo package to get the, you know, those, that added bite from the Brembo brakes, uh, which honestly, if you're going to be doing any serious performance driving or just serious enthusiast driving, I'd probably recommend that anyway. That might be one of the biggest reasons to just jump up to the club trim is because that package comes standard uh, with the club. So yeah, and the car that we, or the Miata that we tested last year did have that package on it and the brakes were sub substantially uh, bitier and you know they just they also just didn't wear as fast they didn't get as hot as fast um, so yeah I think that if you're going to option anything on the Miata definitely consider that package because there are some tangible performance benefits uh, the seats are also one of them Chase 
prefers the Recaro seats that come with that package over these seats. Personally, I think that it's kind of a wash for me. I liked both of them. I don't think that one is necessarily better than the other. Um, but yeah. However, I do really like the BBS wheels that come with those. I mentioned this in the design segment of this video, but I really don't like these wheels that much. Um, yeah, those BBS wheels that come in that package are, I think, pretty pretty gorgeous. I like BBS wheels. I'm a sucker for some nice BBSs, but yeah. Anyways, the Miata formula is largely unchanged here, which honestly is, is great. I'm so glad that, you know, this refresh was minor. It's not like they threw in some you know, hybrid powertrain or something ridiculous like that. It's still the same two liter naturally aspirated engine with a six speed manual transmission, which is just, you know, fun to row through the gears and just have a great time. And honestly, the best part about this is that you can have a great time while not, you know, driving at, you know, a hundred plus miles an hour. Like right now I'm driving, I think I'm like 40 miles an hour, just under 40 miles an hour, having a great time, just, you know, sticking in into these corners and just, really seeing what this car can do from a handling perspective rather than it just being about pure speed and that's what makes the Miata such a great enthusiast car is it doesn't prioritize speed and power over the you know I would say core fundamentals of a great sports car which are you know handling and just overall sort of sportiness in terms of chassis you know rigidity and all that which I think that this car just absolutely nails that and it is one of the best cars I have ever driven uh, the manual transmission is amazing we touched on that a ton last year so I'm not going to go too into it but this, this manual transmission is amazing the flywheel is super light so it makes it nearly impossible to actually stall this car um, I did once but it makes it impossible uh, if you're paying attention and not being an idiot like me but yeah I think that this Miata is I would buy one immediately I, I really would. Um, unfortunately, I'm not really in that <laughs> in that sort of financial position, at least at the moment, um, to have a second car because I couldn't pay leave this car. Um, but if or when, not even if, when I ever have the additional funds to do that, this is probably going to be my first, you know, true sports car that I've owned. Um, which honestly, I'm counting down the days until that happens. But that's my overall driving impressions of the 2024 Mazda Miata. Hi, you may not have been expecting to see me, but I simply cannot abide Joby having the Miata to himself. So I'm gonna give you guys some brief driving notes and talk a little bit more in depth about what's new for the 2024 Miata. Now, there are a few big changes that relate to how this car drives and my driving impressions. Uh, the first one is kinematic posture control. Now that's not new, but we have talked about it, or have not talked about it before on the overrun. Uh, effectively what it is is a sort of pseudo brake torque vectoring system. When you're going through a corner, uh, the car's brain or computer or whatever will apply a little bit of brake on the inside wheel and give you a little bit of a limited slip effect, um, letting you kind of exit the corner in a little bit more controls controlled manner. Uh, Mazda claims that this also helps reduce body roll. Frankly, I like the body roll. The Miata has a lot of it. It's all good. Now, let's talk about the next and arguably most notable change, and that is going to be the DSC track mode. Uh, there's now a little button down here on some Miata models. Uh, you press and hold, gives you a little beep, and now you're in DSC track mode. Now, what that does is it slackens off the TC and stability control, and that allows you to have a little bit more wiggle room on the track in a very literal sense of the word. Uh, you have a little more room to slide the car around and get it to do what you need to do on track. Uh, of course, they say it's for closed course purposes, etc., etc. Um, but it's a nice safety net to have because it allows you to play within the limits of the car and still have that safety net that you need. Now, there is also a new e-pass system, or at least a revised one. Uh, Mazda says that they have made some changes to the car's electronic steering rack uh, system, and that allows it to feel a little more neutral on center, uh, which should be easier, highway, which should make for easier highway cruising, as well as uh, a little bit more precision. Now, <clears throat> let's get moving, because a car hasn't come by in a while. Quite frankly, I don't know how much I feel, let's start with the KPC. I feel it a little bit, I guess. Um, you can 
kind of feel that there's a little bit of limited slip going on. Like if we come in here, flip it down a second and really roll the throttle on. I feel the car kind of set in. Um, now the Miata has always kind of done that. Could I tell the difference between this and a car without KPC? Probably not without driving them side by side. The last time Joby and I drove a Miata was last year. We drove that white soft top club model with the Brembo BDS Recaro package. Um, yeah, it's, it's it, sure, you know, it might help, but I, I need a side by side, same day example. And that is also true of the new steering rack, which, yeah, okay, it might be more well, understeer there. Might be more precise, but again, I'd need a side-by-side -side comparison. I'd need a Mazda engineer in the passenger seat telling me what to look out for. Uh, and obviously, I don't have that right now. Um, that's the map telling me I'm here. <clears throat> so, you know, okay, does that really change what the Miata is? No. Uh, the track mode adds a little bit of confidence, sure, if you're going to track it, which Speaking of, you probably don't want this RF Grand Touring model if you're going to do any track work. Reason being, I'm pretty heavy on the brakes right now. See, I can kind of yaw it out just a hair more with the DSC track mode on. The TC would have said no thank you had I not had it on. So fundamentally, it doesn't change the way that the Miata behaves. It is still light. I still have a ton of room in the lane. I'm taking a racing line on a two-lane road at 47 miles an hour. The speed limit here is 40. I'm seven over and at seven tenths driving pace. It's it's fantastic. I don't need more sports car than this. And I'm sure that Joby has touched on this. This is this is quite easily the best sports car that we've driven on the overrun. Uh, it's one of the best sports cars that I have driven personally. I've driven Cayman GT4s that don't feel as progressive and neutral as this. Controversial as that might be, I love the Cayman GT4, but it's not front engine, rear drive, and it, it doesn't feel as distilled as this. Now, there are some things that I would like to see different or change over the next few years. Hopefully Mazda just continues to make the ND as it exists. Uh, is that likely? No. Can we pretend for now? Yes. I'd like to see some bigger brakes on base cars. It's really easy to cook the brakes on these, even on just your local country back road. Uh, you get a couple big hard stops in and suddenly the cabin starts to smell a little funky. Uh, you know, if you're going to do any serious track work, you need that Brembo BBS Recaro package. Those Recaros are fantastic. We talked about it ad nauseum in our previous video. If you want to hear more about those changes, you can go and watch that. We'll leave a link in the description. Um, this RF Grand Touring model, what it really needs to be a more Grand Touring uh, oriented car, perhaps a touch more sound deadening, sacrilegious as that might be to add weight to a Miata. What else does it need? Not much, man. I'd like somewhere to put my phone in any Miata for sure. There's a little cubby thingy down here that's only about as wide as my four fingers, like this. Um, my phone happens to fit, but it doesn't go all the way in. I want somewhere to put my phone. I feel like if they could put a glove box here, that would have done. Other than that, man, we are just nitpicking. So what we're going to do is we're going to get back to Joby. We're going to wrap up our final thoughts on the 24 Miata and say our prayers that this car continues as it is. Because, like I've said, this is probably the best pure sports car that you can buy for under $100,000 and quite possibly at any price. That's it. So what are my overall thoughts and conclusion on the 2024 Mazda Miata? Well, I think my drive impressions say it all. I absolutely love this car. Um, the six speed manual transmission, the, you know, relatively under stress, but still plenty powerful two liter four cylinder engine. Um, everything is great. Everything works in harmony. I do really like the new updates, like the, uh, you know, updated infotainment system, the new USB-C ports, but for the most part, everything is mostly unchanged from last year, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. I think the minor refresh was exactly what, you know, the Miata needed just to kind of stay up to date with, you know, modern times and whatever. Having better Apple CarPlay and Android Auto support and just having that larger screen is really nice. Uh, but overall, I think that this is a absolutely amazing car. If you're looking for a, you know, two-door sports coupe or roadster, I think that 
the Miata across really not even I think just in its price category but I think that honestly the Miata right now is probably one of the best driving cars that you can buy on the market um, in general the transmission is absolutely amazing like I said before but yeah I think that the Miata is an incredible incredible proposition um, and it's honestly one that I wish I could afford right now I would do almost anything to buy this car um but one day one day i'll be able to do that hopefully um but yeah with that those are my overall thoughts on the miata i absolutely love it and i hope you do too i hope you love this video and if you did be sure to drop a like and then consider subscribing if you want to see more automotive content like this in the future we do a lot of reviews and all that kind of jazz so if you like it Please subscribe and stick around comment down below what you think about the newly refreshed mazda miata or if you have a previous generation miata let us know as well i know in our last miata video there was a ton of people from the miata community whether it was na and b and c or even the nd uh, that chimed in, in the comments so always happy to hear what you guys have to say um but yeah with that i'm out of here and i'll catch you on the next one bye